I'm sure you've heard of CBD, but have you heard of CBDA? Today we're going to talk about all things CBDA, what it is, the differences between CBD and CBDA, and its incredible health benefits. I'm Risa Morimoto, your host. I'm an integrative nutrition health coach, and you're watching Modern Aging, where we chat about innovative and holistic ways to elevate our health and well-being as we age. If you're new to the channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. All you got to do is click on that little red button below with that little bell next to it to be sure to be notified whenever a new episode is uploaded. I'd also love for you to check out the website at thisismodernaging.com where we have new um, videos and podcasts and articles every single week. Today, my guest is Stacy Kaysen. She is the founder and CEO of Planetary. She was an ICU nurse and anesthesiology nurse practitioner turned real estate developer. It was actually during her time as a real estate developer that she was introduced to the hemp industry at one of her properties. Um, she is going to share with us what it is and how it can help with everything from inflammation, pain, anxiety, and even nausea. So check it out. Super excited. Today we're going to talk about planetary and specifically CBDA because that's what you make. Um, I think CBDA is incredible and has so much potential to help so many different people. Um, but before we kind of get into it, um, I want to hear more about you, your story, and how you even came to this crazy business because <laughs> you were not <laughs> you were not in this kind of CBD industry beforehand, right? Right. No, I, I started my career in healthcare. So I was an ICU nurse for a couple of years and then did a master's in anesthesia. So I was a anesthesiology nurse practitioner for um, 10 years in practice after school. Um, and then I went to business school to totally change careers and, and went to real estate development, <laughs> which I still do some. Yeah. So big change <laughs> from the operating room hats to hard hats. Yeah, uh, exactly. And then I was introduced to the hemp industry in early 2018. And I got really excited about the potential of healing from these plant medicines, from the cannabinoids. So I kind of looked at the whole industry from a 30,000 foot view systems approach and major bottleneck was in processing. And I wasn't really crazy about the way processing was being done. You know, through what traditional do you mean by methods. processing for people who, you know, are not in the industry? Yeah, of course. So, so hemp is, is a cannabis plant, right? And the plants themselves make these, these cannabinoids, but you have to get it from the field into like, you know, the bottle or whatever. So um, most are done with ethanol um, or CO2, which is then refined with ethanol, hexane, pentane, other hydrocarbons, which are flammable, which are not good to accumulate in our bodies. So we at Planetary set out to create a method for extracting with water. So that was... Um, it was a little harder than I expected it to be <laughs> just to refine the process and kind of get the business up and going. Um, it's an interesting space, the whole, the whole hemp industry. So yeah, I had never worked in manufacturing before, but, uh, but I have a science background. So I was really dedicated to the science part of it. And then having worked, you know, a 15 year career in essentially pain management in anesthesiology. So that was, that was the, the why, you know, to have a new method of, of pain management without um, dangerous and addictive opioids or damaging non-steroidal NSAIDs. Yeah, no, I totally agree. That's how I kind of came into it. My mother had Parkinson's and was mm. just trying to look for alternative solutions for her that were a little bit more holistic um, than yeah. taking your pharmas. Um, so how, so were you trying to go the traditional path of, you know, regular hemp and CBD products, or did you immediately find CBDA? CBDA? How did you discover it? Um, or I guess when studying it, you stumbled upon CBDA, but why did you decide to focus on it? Um, and then if you could actually explain the difference yeah. between yeah. CBD and CBDA. No, I think that's the fundamental question and most people don't realize. So the plant herself makes CBDA. The plant does not make CBD. CBD is what happens after heat chemicals and often both. So um, with a water extraction, we're able to keep it in the same form that it's made in the plant and this raw, natural, acidic, um, and keep it in this full spectrum form. So it's as close to the plant as you can be. 
And so by keeping it in that natural form, that ends up with CBDA. So I actually never wanted to do any of the traditional processing. And originally the thought was, well, nobody's ever heard of CBDA, but you can, you can decarb it and sell it as CBD. And I actually never wanted to do that. So we started pretty early with like looking at the research of CBDA and what if we left it the way nature made it? And there are fewer studies than CBD, for example, but there are lots out there. I think we reviewed over 400 recently for the white paper and the addendum. So it turns out there's actually quite a benefit to leaving it in this raw natural form. So it's more bioavailable in our bodies. So our bodies actually absorb it better when it's in this CBDA form. Um, it's, it's, so it's more potent, it's more bioavailable. And then there's some additional benefits that aren't present with CBD. And I think the most important one there is the anti-inflammatory pathway of the, the COX-2 receptors. So that's the same group of receptors by which ibuprofen can block your headache, but without the side effects to your stomach and kidneys that come from their kind of sister group of COX-1 receptors. So that might be a little more science and medical than most people want to know, but the basic message is that by leaving it in the raw form that it's made in the plant, it's actually better in our bodies against inflammation that's amazing. I mean, it makes me think about why, why did we, not we, but why did the industry then focus on CBD so much? Why has CBD kind of blown up? Why didn't we figure out that CBDA, is it much harder to keep it in its raw form? It is with the traditional methods. So what is known and I'm not sure if it was before, but, but all the other methods of extracting use the chemicals which cause a decarb. So the rumor in the industry is that CBDA as a molecule is not stable. And we've actually disproven that for three and a half years now. And it's because those, those chemicals, the ethanol most specifically, cause the decarb reaction. So the ethanol itself, even if no heat was used, decarboxylates it and turns it into CBD. So since that's the way plants have been extracted since the 11th century, <laughs> that's kind of what had happened. And so I think that's the way it was studied because that's what's most commercially available. I think another parallel path that has gotten people confused over the years is that if you are going to a dispensary and you're getting marijuana plants that are high in THC, and if your intention is to get high from these, if you take that same flower, um, the bud, the plant, whatever, and you either eat it or juice it, which is kind of the equivalent, you get the THCA, the acidic form, which does not cause psychoactive effects. So if your intention is to get high, then you have to heat it, like with a lighter or whatever, or decarboxylate it into THC to get those effects. So the I think a long time ago, not on the scientific side, but more on the kind of cultural side, they thought it wasn't activated if it wasn't heated. And that's been proven to be incorrect over and over scientifically. But you do still have some people from kind of that old stoner culture, I guess, that, that think it has to be heated or burned or decarboxylated in order to be activated, which is actually not true. So right. on, on the CBD side, like our plants are low in THC, so nobody's getting high from our products anyway. Uh, but it's a similar path in that leaving it in the raw form versus heating it to turn it into a CBD. Wow. Yeah, that's a great, great explanation, right? And it's because uh, a lot of people are confused and some people right. do think, oh, am I going to get high? Like that's the yeah. first question if people are in, <laughs> haven't been taking <laughs> these products, right? Yeah. Right. No, you're not. No. Um, so you is drink the whole bottle and you're not going to feel high. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so in terms of um, CBDA, so what forms of, um, is it just for pain or are there other ways that you can use it? Definitely other ways. So the, the bigger um, action, I think, is the anti-inflammatory. That's not just pain. So actually most of our modern diseases are inflammatory in origin. 
So a lot of anxiety is actually inflammation in the brain. Um, you know, diabetes is from inflammation. I mean, there's so many things. That, that nerve pain can be from inflammation. There's a lot of autoimmune stuff that's inflammatory in nature. So that's a actually a really big umbrella of, of I don't know, diseases, illnesses, symptoms that come from inflammation. But besides that, it also is really powerful against nausea. So it acts on the serotonin receptors, which which does have a play in the brain for anxiety and depression, but specifically the 5-HT1A is a receptor that, that connects with the stomach. So we know there's a correlation between our stomach and our brain, right? When you get really nervous or anxious about something and you feel it in your stomach, that's that serotonin receptor. So CBDA um, helps to block that. There's a study in the National Institute of Health that shows CBDA being a thousand times more potent than CBD against nausea. Wow. So we have um, a good friend of mine had uh, breast cancer. And so when she was going through her treatments, I sent her some of our soft gels. And she says, this is amazing. Like, this, this takes away my, the nausea, and I'm able to have, keep food down. And so that's another big one that we see is on the nausea side. Wow. So would that be even for, like, car sickness or motion sickness? Mm -hmm. Yes. It, the, specifically, the article says anticipatory nausea which car sickness definitely falls under. Oh, wow. So then you would just take it right before you're going to be on a long car ride, mm -hmm. and that should take care of it. Yeah. Wow. So in what instances, because CBD also is anti-inflammatory, right? Yes. And you did talk about these COX-1, COX-2, which doesn't probably mean much to most people. Right. Um, so scientifically, that's the difference. But so like, when would you want to take CBDA or choose CBDA versus CBD as more an effective way of treating whatever is ailing you? Yeah. So they act on different receptors and kind of additional receptors. So they actually work really well together. So I'm not here to say don't do CBD. I'm saying CBDA offers some additional benefits. So the COX-2 receptors, CBD does not act on that. It does have anti-inflammatory properties, but through some of the endocannabinoid receptors. Um, so CBDA is far more powerful against inflammation. But also what they found is the combination of the two has a synergistic effect. So sometimes if it's, you know, it's bad enough pain, you can combine the two. Or another good example is CBD has what we call a biphasic response. So like the curve it takes a little to get going and then but then too much kind of has the opposite effect cbda does not do that it's actually linear so oh. some people if like you find you you've increased your dose and cbd is not doing it for you or you've taken so much that you're kind of seeing the opposite effect that might be a really good time to add in cbda right so you could take the cbda instead of cbd or you could take it in addition to that's great. So which brings me to kind of dosing um, and how one would figure out how to dose themselves. What should mm -hmm. they take first? I know that you have um, several different products. I love mm -hmm. your soft gels and your tinctures and, oh, my God, you and the muscle rub that you have is like, yeah, it's like a, a family favorite. Oh, <laughs> <thank> <laughs> yeah, those are kind of my faves, too. <laughs> uh, so, so if I'm... So if I'm new to this, right, and I'm, I have some mild chronic pain or something, um, I'm assuming you don't really think of it as like taking an Advil for the pain to go away, that it's more of, uh, more of a lifestyle, lifestyle practice where you're kind of taking it with your supplements type of thing. Or do you think you should just take it for acute pain? I take it for acute pain. Oh, you do? Um, yeah, and there's um, there's a book recently published by a physician at George Washington University, um, Dr. Kogan, and he actually compares using it like ibuprofen. Um, so I found that like one soft gel of ours, which is 25 milligrams in these little, let's see, little caps, um, it's equivalent to like one ibuprofen pill. So if you have a headache and you would normally take two ibuprofen, take two soft gels. If oh, this wow. is a really bad one and you want four, take four, right? So we, the dosing on these soft gels is low enough that you can take several. The idea with dosing is that every one is, is individual. And so it's, it's kind of both. There's that 
take something daily, think of it like a daily vitamin to satisfy your endocannabinoid receptors and to find yourself in more homeostasis and, and better balance in your body. And then there's the like above and beyond. Like today, really feel a migraine, so I'm going to put the drink additive in my morning coffee and I'll, I'll feel that better, right? Or I'm also a fan of the muscle rub. So if like my neck is hurting or after my workout this morning, my left knee was a little irritable, then, then I rub the, I can tell you use mine a lot. <laughs> then I rub the, the muscle rub on whatever kind of ails you above and beyond. So I, you kind of think of it as two, two parts. So have your kind of daily maintenance dose and then have extra for when you need. Um, we get a lot of compliments on the salve. Um, someone earlier this week was like, oh my gosh, it's like miracle in a jar because it's good for the skin. Yeah. In addition to the pain points, it's, you know, based in jojoba oil, which is great for our skin. And it doesn't really, and the, um, the scent is like very, very light, Yes. yes. you know, so it's not overpowering for people who don't right. like, I don't know, they don't like things that are too perfumey. Like I can't handle things that are too perfumey. Right. Yeah, um, I don't like them either. So it's very it's subtle. We have an unscented, and then the pink grapefruit is is subtle, and it's using just essential oils. Um, but what's what's kind of nice about our products is we don't we're not pulling out all the terpenes. Or actually, what most people do is they add back in a ton of the terpenes, so that it smells like hemp. Well, I I think a lot of people actually don't want to smell like that, especially if it's something you're rubbing on your skin. Um, or you may not want that taste. There, there's an occasion for it, right? But not everyone wants that strong, you know, plant taste. Right. right. But terpenes. So um, define terpenes for the audience, um, and the fact that there are different aromas, right? So that mm -hmm. that you can pull depending on, I guess, the strain of the plant. Um, yeah. So you could have more than just you know it's smelling like weed, basically, yes. right? Yes. But what you're saying is mean, terpene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terpenes, just on a basic level, are, are components of the plant that give it a smell and taste. And I think of them like accessories, like aesthetics. It's the smell and the taste. And it's not just in hemp. So blueberries smell like blueberries because that plant has a specific terpene in it. And there's so many terpenes, and they're different named. And some people really get into the, the terpene profile. I'm not sure how much that really benefits the medicinal side. So I don't get into that so much. Um, what we pull out is, is the cannabinoids and it's all of the cannabinoids from the plant. So it's CBDA, but it's also THCA, which doesn't get you high, CBGA, CBDVA. There's quite a few of all the A's and A stands for acid. So it's the acidic form made in the plant. We also pull out um, plant sugars, the oligosaccharides and flavonoids. And the flavonoids are interesting because that's a component of the plant material itself. It's not actually a cannabinoid molecule, but it's closely related to that. And they've been shown to be antioxidant, anti-inflammatory in themselves. So then that could be a part of what we call the entourage effect. So there's a lot of companies and maybe some of the bigger ones um, that only pull out an isolate. Right, or it's an isolated molecule, so it's only the CBD molecule, but nothing else from the plant. And what studies over and over and over have shown is that there's far greater benefits from having the whole plant extract versus one isolated molecule, or even two isolated molecules. That there's a there's so many benefits. I think a lot of that is in the flavonoids and is in the plant particulates, but also in having like all of these different cannabinoids in concert together, so they do better all together. So all of our products are full spectrum. Right, which makes total sense, right? The, the yeah. less you fool around with the plant, the more you're going to get its benefits. I mean, it's this yeah. kind of... We keep thinking... Common sense. Yeah, we as humans, right, collectively keep thinking we can do things better than nature, and it's proven over and over that most times we can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a reason why it is what it is, right? I think that that's a, a great lesson to learn. And... Um, so how many different kinds of products have you created now? We could loosely put them into kind of three categories, ingestibles, topicals, and pet. Um, but I think we have 14, 15 SKUs right now. Wow. Um, it's actually 
new one in the back I didn't pull out. Um, our newest one is the Ultimate Body Oil, and it's a massage oil, but it's, you know, like all of our products, it's, it's formulated in-house with the fewest intentional functional ingredients. So um, I actually formulated that one myself in the lab, and it's five different oils that are organic, and that can all be used internally. So it's a massage oil, but it could also be like a lubricant, and it could also be used, you know, anywhere on the body and, and internally. So it's really multifunction. Um, it can be have, used internally? Yeah. So like a lube. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. So um, we've actually gotten good feedback on that aspect of it. So, oh, yeah. really? Being used as a lube? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's we great. We have other topicals like the body butter. I really like it's like a thick moisturizing um, lotion. You can tell I use mine a lot. <laughs> the salve and muscle rub we already mentioned, um, and this the body butter has a lavender apricot flavor. It's kind of nice. yeah. I like the body butter. The body butter, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like butter. And then the adjustables we have the soft gels, the infusion. I really like the tropical flavor. You can tell mine's almost empty. Um, and then the drink additive. So the drink additive is water soluble, which means it crosses the blood brain barrier more easily. So I like to put it in my morning coffee or tea and I can tell I can focus better afterwards. I tend to get a little almost ADD where you like, there's so much going on. And so I find that I can focus better the drink additive. And a lot of people use that one for headaches. Oh, wow. So yeah, actually, so the drink additive and then your tincture yeah. are... Um, the infusion. Yep. So the infusion you would just take as like a tincture directly under yes. the tongue directly and then the, the drink tongue. additive you add to whatever you're drinking. Yeah. But you can, you can take the infusion and put it in your drink if you want to, mm -hmm. or yeah. you just don't. It's basically it. coconut oil. So you'll see, you know, it's kind of like bulletproof coffee, right? You'll see it. Whereas the, the drink additive water soluble will actually dissolve, but yeah, they both could go either way. There's also been, uh, information over the last few months about CBDA and COVID-19 yes. um, and reports that came out recently. So maybe you can yes. share a little bit about that. Sure. So that was a big study released, uh, I think, January 12th from Oregon State University. And what they had found was that um, they tested several different compounds, but CBDA and CBGA, which are both in our products, inhibit the transmission of the COVID virus. So to try to simply explain the way COVID virus and, and many viruses get transmitted from either from cell to cell or from my body to your body is there's like a lock and a key system. So on the cell, there's um, a lock, like the lock on your door and ACE receptors. And so there's spike protein from the virus goes to the ACE receptor that allows it entry into the cell. The CBDA and CBGA change the shape of the lock on the cell. So now that spike protein does not allow it to enter the cell anymore. So you'll see either more minor cases, if they were taking lower doses and like some's getting through and some isn't, they have more um, minor um, exacerbation, or they just don't transmit it at all. And so the study was done in vitro, which is in, in test tubes, right? So they were looking at the virus and they were looking at these compounds, but not in a human body. That's already going to be done and being done now in animal models and then eventually into humans. Um, but you can also look at what humans have been taking CPDA and how are they doing in this time of COVID? And what's the transmission rate? Um, it's interesting. There'll be more to come out of it. It was a great study. It got a lot of attention. It also got misread quite a bit. I think it was picked up on some late night talk shows and they said smoking weed can prevent COVID. And it's right. not that because it's not, it's not the smoking weed. What they found is actually it's the acidic forms. It's the way it's made in the plant, the way we do it. Wow. Wow. That's, that could be a total game changer on many levels, right? Yeah. We saw a huge spike right after that in interest in, in purchases, which is great. You know, our, our goal is to get these products out to people who would use their benefits in a meaningful way. Right. 
which is awesome. Which leads me to the fact that, so anybody who's watching, uh, you've been generous enough to provide a discount code, uh, which I will put in the description section below. It's 20% discount for your first purchase for Modern Aging viewers, and I thank you so much for doing that. I think that it's, it's really been um, amazing. You know, I think all yeah. of us have inflammation, unfortunately. Like, I don't know anybody who doesn't have inflammation right. of some sort. Right. Um, True. They're living on some nice little island somewhere and foraging <laughs> for their food. Yeah. And you know what I mean? They don't have to, because it's just. In our modern crazy. world, that's what's here. Um, and also, we're really generous with samples. So if someone's, like, interested but they're not sure, they can reach out to us, hello at planetary.com, and ask for a sample. We're happy to do that. And also, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you buy the product and you're like, this just isn't it for me, or for whatever reason I don't like it, great, um, return it, we'll give you your money back. So we we really believe, you know, once people try the products, they do love them. We have a, over 70% returning customer rate. So, wow. but if you're if you're not one of those, happy to refund your money. That's huge. That's really, really, that's putting your money where your mouth is, right? Yes. I think yes. that's, <laughs> but I do think that CBDA has, um, I've been taking it uh, regularly now, and, you know, I just, I just feel like all this plant medicine is just good for us, you know, and I think that if we can just bring it more mainstream, and which I think it's on its way, yes. um, and where people aren't reaching for their pharmaceuticals, but rather, you know, reaching for their plant medicines first, um, would just hopefully we'll have a healthier planet.